Hello and welcome to day 18 of Vlogmas. Two days ago we went to see Spider-Man No Way Home so we're just gonna have a little chat about our thoughts on that. Now we don't want to do a spoiler review at all, non-spoiler, but as you pointed out... I, I You can't even listen to a non-spoiler review because there are emotions attached to it that are spoilers in themselves so go away watch the film and then come back <laughs> yeah so we recommend just don't watch this if you if you don't want anything ruining but now oh chris i spoke to chris about uh, me and brocky wanted to talk about it over dinner last night because we went out with chris and uh chris um he knows all the spoilers i think in this case, uh, there was no spoilers that I didn't... Oh, there might have been a couple small ones that I didn't mm. know. But kind of the, the big key ones I had had a bit of a clue about. Anyway, we're not going to go into certain things. Um, Hugh said originally, even saying that was brilliant or that was rubbish is a spoiler in itself. But, and I know this is probably cinema effect, what Chris calls the cinema effect. Where halfway through the film, I thought to myself... This is the third best Marvel film, which is b behind Infinity War and what must end game. Um, now I'm thinking maybe it's the fifth best Marvel film, but out of 22 Marvel films, that's high praise. What was your initial? It's up there. It's up there, up at the but top. I liked Rise of Skywalker just after we'd seen it. And, yeah. And I realised that that's wrong and it's awful. <laughs> um, so... And same with Ghostbusters. I came out of Ghostbusters thinking five stars and now it's like it's four at best. Yeah. So we need to see for ages. Having said that, if we're comparing things, we all came out of Frozen 2 going that was amazing. We gave it 92 out of 100 on our podcast and we discussed it recently. We still think it's amazing. Holds up. So we're going to see how it goes. Right, things we can talk about. First of all, and people will see this from the trailers, so if you've seen trailers, there are characters from other movies in this film. Now, I kind of went into this not as excited as I think some other people were. I was a little bit meh, because I thought it was going to be fan service, it was going to be cameos, it was going to be novelty. But in actual fact, everybody who's in this film from other films needs to be there and serves a really important part in the story and is given enough time for a tiny bit of character development as well. I don't think there's any just advent calendar face shots, do you? Not even a Stan Lee. Not even, not even a Stan Lee kind of thing. So that is a big plus because that was one of my biggest... In fact, that was my overriding thing. I knew it was going to be a you know, an extended universe, multiverse thing. And I was like, oh, is it just going to be loads of, you know, putting toys in for, you know, from the Marvel toy box and playing with toys and it not really having purpose? That's not the case. What, where would it be on your cry factor? Because it's quite a heavy film in parts. Maybe, maybe up to a five in parts. Mm. Up to a five on the old cry factor scale. I think the... The... The the relationship between MJ and Peter is very believable, and um, yeah, it's it's, it's very believable. In, is it real? In real life, Are they, is it? Is I think it? So. I yeah. didn't know that. I think so. She's taller than he is. Yeah. Mm. But he's Spider Man. That's true. So. And he can do a backflip at will. Mm -hmm. And he can dance. So, what can you say? Is there anything else we can say without going into it? There was noise in this cinema. Oh no. Good noise. Oh yeah. I've never had that before. See, yeah. these are the kind of things like, you know, if you're watching it thinking, I don't want any spoilers, but it's a non-spoiler review, knowing that there's noise in the theatre, you, you think, well, why could that be? As British people, we watch American, like... We see American reactions in cinemas on, like, TikTok and YouTube and stuff. And also people talk about the action in the cinema, cheering and whooping and cry. Thing is, British people, well, you'll, know, you'll know this if you're British, we, are, we just sit there and go, hmm, mm hmm. Mm. Absolute silence. And I don't think I've ever heard reactions in cinema. Even in, like, Endgame and stuff, there wasn't really, was there? No. But this, there was two occasions when the cinema went, oh, 
like proper vocal reaction, wasn't there? Well, someone said something, but I can't even say the word that he said. Yes. Yeah. It's a spoiler. <laughs> um, and I was laughing out loud at some of the conversations. Oh, this is another thing. They do this thing that seems quite current with Marvel movies at the moment. And Ghostbusters did it as well, where they take a bit of time to just hold a conversation between a couple of characters, a couple of three characters, and they just talk and it's a good sort of five minute film and it's funny and it's interesting and it's about nothing. They did a similar thing in Ghostbusters. I thought that bit went on a bit too long. They do it a couple of times in this, but I quite like it and I was I was really laughing. But then I've heard people say since it's because of COVID. It's they're limited to like big ensemble things because they can only have a certain number of actors acting together and stuff and it's something to do with the filming process. Mm. I enjoyed that. You thought that went on long. Too wordy. It did feel a bit long because uh, it was set up in a way that it looks like something was going to happen in the background and then it didn't. All right. Yeah, yeah. I see that. Uh, I liked the tone of this trilogy, but um, too much Iron Man suit stuff, which I hate. Um, and that's... It's, there's still a lot of hangover from the Iron Man friendship in this. And I just I just want to put that aside. I'm, I'm bored of it. He's not mentioned too much, though, is he? Yeah, but, you know, it's like... Yeah. He's mentioned enough, I think. Yeah. It's... I think that the... I didn't know after Endgame how they were going to enter phase... Is it phase five now? Something like that. Yeah. Phase five of the MCU. I didn't know how they were going to do it. But we're kind of a few film slash series in now, haven't we? We've had Wanda, Loki, Loki Hawkeye, Black Widow doesn't count because that's chronologically earlier. Spider-Man, uh, Shang-Chi. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier isn't enough. Oh, you mean Falcon and... Oh, yeah, yeah Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, Eternals we haven't seen. We are bad Marvel film fans. Why haven't we seen that? I don't know. We just haven't had a chance. But we're a few films in now and I'm beginning to feel like we are leaving that a bit behind and new stuff is happening. It does mean an introduction of a lot of new characters, but it's good. I, don't, I think that's all we've got to say without doing a full review. Yeah, I'd give it five stars. I would still give I'd it give five it, stars. I'd give it five spider webs. It's not a, the perfect film I thought it was when I came out of the cinema, but I recommend you go and see to the cinema yourself because you will get the cinema effect, particularly if you have a fun audience like we had. And it's... There's so many Marvel films now, I think there's 22 now, and the quality is so high. To say it's in the top five or top six, that's massive high praise, even if it's not at number one. Right, thank you very much for watching. I will see you... Tomorrow!